So next what we're going to do is we want to post to Twitter, right? We want to be as basically able to do a web service call. Now, since a dropping, uh, since making a web service call is nothing specific to Android, right? Uh, what we're going to do is we're not going to spend time actually implementing web services, right? That's just like standard Java. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to use a third-party library called JTwitter. You don't need to go to this URL. I'm just going to point out. So we're going to use a third-party library called JTwitter uh, that is just a plain old Java uh, <coughs> library, and it implements the Twitter API. Now, you could go and download the jar file from one of these links. Um, I always have a problem with their uh, jar file. They, uh, there's an, there's a, some, the way they parse date is not correct and it fails for certain services. So what I did is I kind of took a fork of their code, modified it to fix that, told them about it, and, uh, uh, but I don't, you know, they know about it, but they don't, I don't think they actually did much about it. So we basically don't use their copy of the code. We use my copy of the code, but it's just, it's the same, for the most part, it's the same code, right? There's just, there's a slight difference in how the date uh, values are parsed, right? So, uh, if you look at the, uh, the Dropbox place, I copied a file called JTwitter Yamba jar in, into there. So what you want to do with this file is you want to drag it into your Eclipse. So something like this. Here's what I'm going to do. Unless somebody already removed it. But I'm going to drag it into the root of my Eclipse. I'm just going to put it, I'm going to drag it right into the root of my Eclipse. Right? Like that. For, uh, oh, for Dropbox? Um, yeah, there's. Um, sure. Can't be launched. What says that? Uh, you're dropping this file into the root like this. Yeah. And yeah, that's uh did, did that work? Cool. So what we've done so far is we copy we download this plain old Java library, right? The jar, right? Nothing special about this library. It's just a third party Java library. Yeah. Remember yesterday we talked about that you can basically just drop in any type of um, Java um, legacy code into your code and it just works, right? It's going to get recompiled to Dalvik and so forth and so forth. Now, one thing we do have to do is we, tell, we have to tell Eclipse about our project and this library. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click on our project, go into Properties, I'm going to go into Java Build Path, Libraries, So basically, right click on your project, go into properties, right? Java build path, libraries, and then add a jar. Okay. And I'm just going to select the jar that you just added. So at the end of the day, it should look like that. Good. So right click on a project, open properties. So it goes like one, two, three, four, five, and then six is there. I, I mean, it doesn't, it could be any, anywhere, but that's a good place. Okay. 
So far so good? Okay. So you click OK. Um, what we can now do in our status activity is we can actually use that library, right? Let me show you how it's used. According to the documentation, you should be able to do something like this. Create a Twitter object with username and password and set status. Okay. You should be able to just create a Twitter object and set the status in that Twitter object. Everything else happens magically. Right? So let's test that out. So basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say Twitter. So Twitter, Twitter uh, is new Twitter. Okay. And for username and password, we are going to use our standard shared account, which is student password. Don't tell anyone. Right, so you're, it's all underlined, um, is, everything is now underlined red, or at least Twitter is. So Control Shift O or com Command Shift O to organize your imports. And that actually figures out that you're talking about Twitter object from Winnerwell and Associates. And it actually imports the correct thing. Right. Yeah, got it. So, uh, so after that, we can now say Twitter dot set status, and then I can put status text. So basically, we are creating a new Twitter object, right? And then we're using that piece of text that we got from the UI to update the status online, right? Now, there's one line missing here. Um, and it has to do with, with the fact that we're not going to use Twitter.com. So by default, this would go to Twitter.com. Now, we're not going to use Twitter.com. And I mentioned yesterday a couple of reasons for that, right? One is that... Um, Twitter.com A would have a rate limit. So if we all start using it with the same username and a password, it would work for like a couple of seconds until they figure it out, and they would shut us down with some something called a rate limit exception. Right? That, so they, they say how many subsequent posts you can do from the same IP address or your same user and so on to, to avoid spam, right? So that's one problem. The second <coughs> problem with Twitter is that it doesn't support username and password. You can't log in using using any password. You got to use OAuth, right? Which we talked about yesterday. And since I don't want to go down on tangent to, to explain what OAuth is, um, what we did is we created our own uh, account. We talked about all this yesterday, called yamba.maracana.com, right? So that's the account we we're going to be using to post, right? This account, you know, anything goes, right? So people are just posting stuff and so on. Um, so. To override where we're going, we're going to say Twitter dot set API root, and then we're going to override the server. And the API root is going to be HTTP colon slash slash yamba dot maracana dot com slash API. That's the new line. So twitter.jar comes from this site, jwinnerwell.com, software, jtwitterphp, or just Google it. It's going to be the first thing that pops up. It's also available on GitHub. They have their, their repo there. So does that make sense so far, what we're doing? So anybody try to run this? Come on.
Don't be shy, you can run it. Let's see what happens. Okay. So here's the moment of truth, right? Hello. Update. Bam, blows up, right? Cool. If you get this, you're doing well. So everyone got it crashing? Okay. So your job is to tell me why. That's uh, that's that's a possibility. It's a good reason, actually. Um, yeah, and that that has its own issues. That's correct. But first of all, where do I look? What does this message mean? And I know on the older phones, it's a little different message. It says, "Unfortunately, blah 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 has stopped unexpectedly" or something like that. It's always the same message. It's worthless reading it. Don't read it, right? When you see a message, and uh, like and, uh, like I said, they made it a little cleaner recently. But when you see this message, it means one thing. Look at your log cat. The answer is there. Right? That's what it means. Your automatic, you know, knee-jerk reaction, reaction should be to open up your log cat. So, a uh, log cat tells me right here that I had an exception, right? So what I like about Java is that um, exceptions are very e e are usually very easy to find. So since I have my locket running like this in the background, it's easy for me to eyeball the exception. I usually just look for the big white space, right? Bam, bam, right? So it's easy to eyeball even though there's a lot of noise. Okay. Uh, secondly, so usually that tells you what the problem is. Um, next, what you normally do is you look for the first line of the code that you wrote. Okay, the reason for that is that the assumption is that it's not other people's code dying, but it's your own code dying. Okay, that's a good assumption, right? It's not other people's code broken; it's yours. Uh, so basically, here what I'm seeing is that I have something called illegal state exception. I have network on main thread exception, and it's coming from my status activity line 31. Okay, <coughs> so I can actually now pinpoint where the exception is actually being thrown from, and it's here. Right? Now, you guys, does anybody have any, any a different exception? You do. So what does it say? Okay. Did you check your URL and run it again? We don't have any firewalls here, so I I don't I doubt that it has anything to do with the network. Yeah. Anybody else has anything else different? So I don't host a networking on the main you know, on the new thread. So if you run this code on an older device, pre-honeycomb, you run. So let me put it this way: you're running on pre-honeycomb, right? You're running on pre-honeycomb. Yeah, that's why. Um, so if you're running on pre-honeycomb, you're gonna get a different type of an exception, uh, an unknown host exception. If you're running on post-honeycomb, you're gonna get an exception that has to do with running something that possibly run, uh, takes a while on the main thread. Basically, um, before Honeycomb, the best practice was that things that run a long time or potentially run a long time should not run on the main thread. Right? So we're going to talk a little bit about threading now.